Romans 12 famously tells the people of God to be transformed by the renewing of their minds. And both transformation and renewal mean change. Something cannot be transformed and remain the same. Our God is a God of change, a God who wants to work with us to change our lives and this world for the better. So all that being said, let me ask you a question. When was the last time you changed your mind? And I don't mean about what to have for lunch or what t-shirt to wear today. I mean, when was the last time you changed your mind about something important, some deeply held conviction? This is seen as a terrible thing in our society at the moment. Politicians, sports stars, all manner of celebrities, they are hauled over the coals for something they said or did or voted for years and years ago. And somehow saying, well, I believed that then, but not now. I no longer believe that. Saying, I have changed my mind about that thing is a sign of weakness. It's a character flaw. It somehow makes it even worse. But surely changing our minds is a sign of growth. I certainly don't believe all the same things today that I did 10 or 20 years ago. I do not think the same way or behave the same way. My mind has changed. So when was the last time that someone gave you some new information that helped you change your opinion on how you should live on an area of politics, on your faith? When did you last change your mind about a deep-seated conviction, something important? Because if you can't remember or if you haven't changed your mind about anything important for some time, it's either because you've reached perfection or maybe that you're no longer allowing yourself to be transformed by God. The passages we've been reading in Acts over the last couple of days give us some really good examples of people changing their minds about some really important things because God speaks to them. Saul meets Jesus on the road to Damascus and changes his mind. He goes from believing Christianity is a heresy to be eradicated to being one of its greatest advocates. And Ananias hears from the Lord and changes his mind. He goes from believing Saul to be a dangerous opponent, someone to be avoided, to going to him and offering him healing. Peter has a dream and changes his mind. He goes from believing that some foods that we eat might make us spiritually impure and that some people by their diet or their lack of circumcision are prevented from being part of God's family. He goes from that to believing that God welcomes both the circumcised and the uncircumcised, that all food is permissible, that our relationship with God is far, far more important than what we put into our bodies. Saul became an advocate for Christ. Ananias stopped avoiding Paul and went to bring healing. Peter ate with Gentiles and welcomed them into relationship with Christ and the church. All of them had deep-seated convictions, things they believed were right and incredibly important. And they didn't just think they were important for themselves. They believed that these things were important to God as well. But they changed their minds. And the result of these three men changing their minds is a dramatic change in their behaviour. And indeed, Christianity being spread across the world to Jews and most importantly to Gentiles. That's the impact that this had. This is how God shapes us, makes us more like Jesus and uses us to help build his kingdom. It starts in our minds. God calls us to see the world differently, to give our deep held convictions over to him and let him reshape them. To give us back the ones that are true and of him to transform those that are not. That we also might be transformed. That we might think and live differently. This is God's calling on every single one of us to allow even our deepest held convictions to be challenged, shaped and reshaped by him. To be willing and able to change our minds, to admit sometimes that in the past we were wrong and to model that to the world. 
and for all of us to be made more like Jesus. Thank you.